Before we talk about the business aspect of this, watercolor. Mm -hmm. Why did you choose watercolor? And you stay with watercolor primarily, right? I have. I, the funny thing is that when I was at Southern Oregon U, I didn't even take watercolor. I, I had a sampling of, oh, the oil painting, printmaking, all of the sampling that the average fine art major has. But Southern Oregon University at that time, they started having summer workshops and they would bring in nationally known watercolor artists and I started uh, kind of sampling some of that. Love the medium. Very challenging. Uh, it's still, for me, it has a mind of its own. It's unpredictable. But what I loved are the transparency the transparent colors that you can get, the pure hues, it's almost like uh, jewel-like, stained glass uh, colors. And you can get that in other medium, or media, but I have stuck with watercolor. I, I, I still have a long ways to go, I feel, as far as learning my craft. There's just other areas I need to explore. I am tempted when I see some of my peers, even here in the gorge, do fabulous things with like pastels and oil, but it's like, oh, if I had another life, maybe. Yeah. So I stuck with it, yeah. Well, the, the, the watercolors that I've seen that you've done have been um, just outstanding. Mm -hmm. And I was nice. actually talking to uh, Matt, our producer, mm -hmm. about watercolors in general, at least the ones that I had seen prior to seeing yours. I wasn't terribly fond of watercolors. I always kind of thought, yeah. Um, they seemed like they were lacking. They were insipid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or well, I had while I was learning how to paint water. I had two wonderful teachers. They are both here in Oregon. They're nationally ranked. Uh, Judy Morris from Southern Oregon, Susan McKinnon from Portland and those two gals were so helpful they they made me a value painter and what that means is if you consider a scale of like one to ten one is white ten is black uh, to use the whole range of values in a painting and because a lot of uh, artists they'll maybe stick right around five and they may use a lot of colors but they don't have the the extremes of your lights and your very darks and that's what makes a dramatic painting is when you have a balance or have strong values okay and, and that so, doesn't normally get done in watercolors generally i i know lots of watercolor painters who do uh implement that but that can be one thing that might make it uh really stand not out as, more not yes exactly not stand out yeah right, right. So, so tell me the process then of how what is watercolor actually how do you paint watercolor it is a water-based medium and so i've got my palette where i reconstitute these little cakes in water no turpentine no oil that is the water medium i start out I, i'm using my reference material my photos I sketch out a fairly detailed drawing to start with. That's my road map. I may vary that as I go along if I find, oh, this design isn't working, it's not cast in concrete. But that's the start. I'll have my rendering. And then I start from, I go light to dark. I'll have fairly light tints. Mm -hmm. And then I just start laying, well, okay. I use a glazing process. And what a glaze is, is basically a wash where you paint in areas and you let it dry. Uh -huh. And then I may have five, six, seven layers of paint all over the paint painting before it's done. Oh man. That's why it takes me a little longer. It's just, that's my approach. It's not every watercolor artist's approach. I have friends who will have a painting in two or three days. I. I can't imagine, <laughs> unless I did a little, a little thing, small but I can spend, sometimes if it's a large piece, a month on a piece, uh, a month of painting. So, well, uh, how do you get the precision that you get? Because watercolor, again, you know, mm -hmm. I know nothing about yeah, it, but it yeah. would seem like it would be 
not very forgiving and that it could run easily. How do you, how yeah. do you get that precision in the well, lines? I, there are two ways of painting. There's something called wet into wet where you have a, a wet area and you will be painting more wet on top of it and that is where really, truly it'll spread all over it. But then uh, painting uh, wet, well, the wet and dry, you're actually, you've got the wet going on the dry paper okay. and it's not going anywhere than just where you put your brush. Ah. And so uh, that I use a combination. Okay. There will be some areas like a background where I'll have it all very loose and wet and I want a more so soft focus area and that's the wet into wet. But for more precision like a bird, I'm just painting that bird and it may be multiple glazes to get the, the detail to build up but uh, I'll start soft and then it's that uh, you employ a smaller brush for the detailing, the little eyelashes, so mm -hmm. to speak. Uh, but that's way at the end. That's kind of the last thing you do. But so. you never in, you're, you're never incorporating another paint or an oil paint. It's all water-based. For all. the most part, once in a while, I will, if it's if a painting isn't going to into a exclusively transparent watercolor, uh, where that's the only thing you can use, I may use something that's called gouache, and that's an opaque watercolor. Or, or colored pencils to kind of uh, bring out an area. I will, uh, we have lots of tools in our bag of tricks, yeah. but, but uh, mostly it's water it's color, water. the transparent water color. Yeah. Wow, yeah. well it's sure yeah. beautiful. Well, more when we come back, we'll be right back. Coming up. I'm uh, learning more and more about how to uh, work with computers and Oh, about a year ago, learned the value of social networking and all of that. I